change is happening incredibly slow. That's my experience. The building industry in Norway is globally in the forefront when it comes to sustainable constructions, but the development the past 15 years is not even close to where it should be if we are to reach the emission goals. I'm here to talk about a project uh, that can help us achieve a frog leap innovation within UN, UN Sustainability Development Goals number 11. It's a new town, a pilot for zero emission urban development, included all phases and all fields. We call it Solihegda Plus Town. The urban population of the Oslo area is growing rapidly and will continue to grow. Three main axes are densely populated today. Asker Drammen in the west, Kolbotne Ski in the south and Lillestrøm Gardermoen in the northeast. The northwest axis towards Hønefoss and Bergen has so far been sparsely developed. But now the government invests billions in a new four-lane four highway and a new rail track on this axis. Um, <clears throat> the landowners at Solihagda wish to use this opportunity to develop a new town, approximately 2,700 dekars, for, one, for 10 to 15,000 inhabitants and 10 to 15,000 workplaces. We have developed uh, four town principles uh, for Solihagda. Um, smart city and transportation, plus energy, marka portal, uh, a portal to the forest, and circular economy. Uh, today I will focus on smart infrastructure and transportation. Circular economy for surplus rock masses. The area is forest as it is today. The yellow area on the map on the right hand side uh, is the area that's zoned for development. The gray area overlapping uh, is where the rail authority wish to uh, store rock surplus rock masses from the building of the rail tunnel under the site. There are also several more uh, infrastructure projects in the Oslo regions, including two new subway tunnels to Fornebu and through the center. And there are currently no plan how to deal with these large surplus masses. And chances are they also will end up here uh, because it's uh, the shortest transportation way. And uh, the forest will probably be destroyed. So why not um, uh, use the rocks for something useful? Skanska has uh, developed a plan for circular use of the rock masses on, on these sides. And I don't have time to go into it now, but it's a potential to reuse a large amount of the rock masses <coughs> and um, uh, bring it to the site, sort it, deal with it, and then bring it back to other building sites. And this will make the transportation distance less a lot shorter than um, to the um, uh, alternative um, uh, places. And um, <clears throat> the, when it comes to in infrastructure construction, uh, the emissions uh, in, in a great deal comes from uh, the transportation of stone. So this can be a, a significant uh, point to reduce climate gas emissions. When we look at the energy use in Norway, uh, you see on this slide that transportation um, accounts for quite a lot of the total energy use. Uh, this is the end use um, fractions. And the Norwegian building industry <coughs> has um, come a long way to, uh, to uh, improve uh, energy use in buildings. Uh, but on the transport sector, we haven't had such a big focus the recent years. 
And with this project, we wish to bring focus on the energy use connected to transportation and infrastructure. Uh, and this is quite complicated, but we are designing a town where you can get all the daily activities done within 10 minutes reach without the use of car. And this will, of course, reduce the energy use connected to transportation quite a lot. Conventional towns in Norway has been planned for cars since World War II. Uh, and as a result of that, we drive a lot of car in Norway. We know it's possible to plan for walking, bicycling and public transportation from other countries. Uh, by thinking, having this as a focus from day one. And we also uh, plan to use new technology, new mobility technology uh, within micromobility, electric engines and autonomous vehicles to make it even more attractive to not use the car. Recently, uh, Kovi and partners made a study for Ruter uh, investigating how autonomous cars change the transport in the Norwegian cities. Uh, it was a scenario study where worst case scenario showed us that if all cars, uh, all private cars become autonomous, the traffic will double because the car drives around alone. Uh, and the best case scenario is that if all cars are shared and function as autonomous taxis, the traffic will be reduced with 31%. Uh, and either of these scenarios are probably viable or uh, something we wish for. Uh, and it shows us that walking, bicycling, bicycling and public transportation is very, very important. And that's the reason why we think it's uh, important to make a pilot town for autonomous public tra transportation uh, in combination with walking and bicycling and micromobility. Um, and Sudlihagda uh, can be such a pilot city where public transportation has high frequency and decent speed. So we plan a net a street network with separate lanes for the buses, ensuring speed and safety, and uh, an additional street network for walking, bicycling, uh, and micromobility is preferred. The rail tunnel planned under this town is a double rail tunnel. <coughs> Uh, there will be the conventional train tunnel with the two trains and a safety tunnel, a smaller safety tunnel used in case of fire. At all other times, it's possible to use the safety tunnel for public transportation, uh, as you see on the left hand side here. Uh, and Elon Musk has already designed a system for this where buses or uh, cars can drive on the street and then be guided into a tunnel. And um, let's see, let's start. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Come on. Okay, well, the, the cars can be guided through um, the tunnel uh, at quite, or the buses can be guided through the tunnel at quite heat, high speed and provide a public transportation system that's more efficient than the conventional now. The tunnel is there anyhow, uh, and Sulyagda, uh, compared to combined with the rail tunnel, can be a Norwegian test site for, for this. Uh, we also say that it should never be more than 200 meters to the forest, to Marka, because it's important to have access to nature for the people's health. And to um, prove that all these ideas are viable, we have just started a research project. It's called Autonomous Public Transportation and Micromobility in Nordic Sustainable Urban Developments. And together with uh, the Norwegian universities and TNU and NMBU, we 
uh, have now five, millions, uh, five million Norwegian kroner to explore this in depth. And we also are connected to five master theses and one to three PhDs. So I'm very excited to be in the start of this project to see if we can really prove it's possible to transist to a car, more or less car-free uh, city. The aims uh, for the research project is to design a green mobility town and calculate the effects in a digital traffic model. And use the results to improve the city design uh, through a design thinking method. We have two case sites. It's uh, Solegda in uh, Bærum and uh, the airport site in Bodø uh, to ensure that uh, we cover all kinds of Nordic climates. Of course, we also have a plan for a plus energy system and a smart microgrid grid and a system where the neighborhoods compete who has the most environmental friendly neighborhood. And uh, we mean, we say that all processes must be circular with both biological and technical cycles. And to achieve all this, we need uh, strong and wide partnerships with the businesses, the government, the academics, the people living there and around, and the capital forces, through what we call a Penta Helix model. Uh, we do experience that we have a lot of uh, politicians uh, supporting the project and uh, helping us to get it um, realized. Um, so, we might not be able to travel on uh, flying skateboards on Solihøgda. <laughs> But um, we can be able to build a town that supplies more than it uses and that can be a living lab for how we reach the zero emission goals. Thank you. <laughs>